I want to speak this morning about vision. Vision. Somewhere in the Bible it says that without vision the people perish. In my life over the last week or two, there have been three or four occasions where the necessity for vision was right to the fore. One of them happened right outside this room here. If you've looked around recently, there's a beautiful pond and a fountain that is not operating. And mostly, it looks like a con construction site. And you know why? Because it is a construction <laughs> site. <laughs> We are building th this beautiful patio and ADA exits and so on. And so we were out there and we were visioning what it could look like out there. And it's something to vision in the middle of a place that looks like a construction site, right? To see something different. And then to move all past all the feelings like, how did it get this way? We weren't really taking care of it the way we should. Uh, you had all, I had all those feelings come through, and yet you have to rise up above the feelings of how things got to be the way they are so that you can have a vision for how they could be and move past all those feelings and see something of possibility. And so it is with all of life. So how do we come into a vision? How does it happen for us? We want to vision something that is who we are and that expresses the gift that we have to give to the world. Another way to say that is that to move forward, you have to know who you are and you have to find your story. You have to find your story and tell your story. If you don't know your story, you don't have much to tell to others. We're really talking about our origin story where we came from, what made us who we are. That origin story for us tells us a lot about what is possible in our future. It fuels our vision to know our origin story. And then out of that comes the vision of what we're to do now. Origin stories are so powerful so powerful. There's an origin story of every culture around the world, some telling of how they got to be where they are. Our scientific origin story is not necessarily that inspiring. I came from an amoeba. <laughs> <laughs> But there are other stories that tell us something about the original intention for how we are made, what's in our spiritual DNA. Of course, the author of Genesis attempted to do that. The story is attributed to Moses. Doesn't strike me as a Moses story particularly. Strikes me as some kind of ancient telling of where we came from and how we're made. When I hear the story in Genesis, I see in my mind something like pictographs. I don't think it was originally told in letters as we know them. The Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. That origin story is telling us something about how we're made and what we're meant to do, what we're here for. It says that we... that. Uh, we were placed in the midst of a garden to dress and keep the garden. We could think of that as a physical garden. We could also think of, think of it as a heavenly environment on earth, a creative field, as we say, an atmosphere, a state of consciousness, a vision, if you will. To keep the garden is to have a vision for the garden. People feel accountable in all kinds of ways. Account accountable to each other. Acc 
accountable to authority. How about being accountable to our vision? That's different, right? If you have a vision that you are serious about, that isn't just a thought or a stray dream, but something that is really deep in your heart, something that you truly see, it's a true vision, a true possibility, then you have the opportunity to hold yourself accountable to that vision. Until you have the vision, there's nothing too much important to hold yourself accountable. You can wander around and do anything. (laughs) But when you have a vision, it's about that vision. How am I going to let that vision manifest? What are the steps? What's the strategy? What's the plan? What is my step now? Life changes when you have a vision and you take the vision seriously. I think it's hard to walk away from a true vision. If you let yourself have that true vision and let yourself be changed by it, let it come into you, pretty hard to walk away from it. I'm sure some people do. But when you really let it in, that is the fire in the belly, is it not? That's the fire in the belly. And the big realization is that the manifestation of the vision depends on you and what you do now. That the things you do now affect whether or not that vision can manifest. So many people never quite get to that stage in their life, or maybe only in glimpses and phases. But for a person who truly has that vision and then gets the big idea that what they're doing right now in this moment is affecting whether that vision, that dream, can come true. And then there's the little matter of not stopping. (laughs) Because if you stop, it means that the vision can't come true. It can't manifest. We who live here at Sunrise Ranch live in what manifested out of the dreams and the visions of the people who came before us. Yes. So honored for their vision and for the fact that they did not stop. Some of those people are still here today. Others are not, passed on. But we hold them with high esteem and high honor people of vision who did not stop.